All right, hey everybody, my name is Rob Satcham and I'm gonna show you how in Webflow you can add a couple of things for search engine optimization in Webflow and to help particularly if you have a small business website, if you have a service-based website, um, particularly something that's gonna to wanna to show up in the Google My Business Rich Snippets. So I've got a couple of very specific things. This is for developers in Webflow and people that are looking for some SEO. Um, and remember that search engine optimization is all about just sending clear messages to people, primarily people, but there are some backend things that you want to send messages to your actual, um, to Google and to Bing. And I'm going to show you some real practical steps here. It's going to be a little bit longer tutorial, but hopefully this is super valuable. So just remember, again, it's like 98%. You want to think about the end user. And then there is this 2% where you do want to do some technical things um, to actually help the user out. There's going to be some links in the description to some uh, resources that I'm going to use here. And I think this will be very helpful. So right off the bat, um, let's just assume you know how to make a website. You've done that before. Um, and what I want to show you right now is how to add what's called schema markup. Schema markup is a, essentially this agreed upon language that helps um, search engines and helps other web platforms or platforms understand what it is that you're trying to show them. And there's three types of schema markup that I think you should be putting into your website that's super valuable, that's gonna help for your small business. Now, there's been a lot of different studies out there that talk about whether or not schema markup will actually help your SEO. And sometimes it's a little vague, but I wanna show you some things that uh, make it really relevant. So right off the bat, if you start searching your business name, so this is a, a customer of mine, um, Asnani CPA Tax and Accounting. When you come here, you see that they're, and we're just doing some additional updates to their schema right now. Um, we always kind of have different phases that we approach stuff in. And so here's their Google My Business. Down here, you'll see that they have um, all their reviews. And down here, you can see their business profile, their images. You know, there are certainly images that are calling up. Um, and then their website is the first result, which is good. It sounds really silly, but branded search is what you're really going to want to make sure that you can capture. And eventually you want to make sure that when you search CPA in Hayward, California, or whatever that is, that that searches. Well, um, there's a website here that I want to talk about, and there's three levels of schema. I think that every website for a small local business should put in. It's the small business, local business schema. It's the organizational schema. And then I think your blog posts in particular, if you're writing blog posts that are going to be very query based, this is important. So there's a website here called technicalseo.com. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a type of schema. Now schema, again, is like this back end language that you can bake into the website so that um, you would actually be able to see if you're ranking. And if you search Google schema validator, you'll see that there's a tool out there, a structured data testing tool that's being phased out. There's actually a new one coming, but what you can do is you could grab your website here um, and what you'll do is you'll actually take the website, you'll paste it in there, and you'll be able to see if over here you've got the code that it's actually grabbing because schema is this JavaScript code, the way we do it, a JavaScript insertion that you'll wanna see. And then over here you can see that it actually works. Um, Again, if you come into the rich, there's another tool. So structured data tool is the first one. You come here, you would put your, your URL, or you can actually put the code that you're about to put in and run test. That's what schema is, is a little code that we're going to insert into pages and into the website. This just crawled the website, and you'll see we've got an organization and an accounting service schema detected. And the beautiful thing is there are no errors. That's what we're searching for. So we have organization and accounting. And you'll see there's some, um, some stuff here, the coordinates, hours, what they take to actually pay. And this can be really valuable. I've seen this do some interesting stuff when it comes to voice search and um, other non-Google. Google is a pretty sophisticated algorithm. You're not going to manipulate them, but this again just helps send good signals. We'll get to the blog post one as well because blogs and videos can do some interesting stuff, but let's pay attention to the, the most basic thing. So you're going to come to this. I like this technical SEO tools and what you'll do is you'll come here and you'll say, hey, I'm going to, uh, and I'll put the, it's a schema markup generator is what this is. And what we're going to do is we're going to select, what are we actually going to do here? We're going to do a local business type of schema. Now there's a type of schema or a type of language, and you can kind of see it over here. It looks kind of goofy. You've got your context, your type. And what this is, is it's meant to send signals to all of the different um, technologies out there, different engines. And 
what we're going to do first is we're just going to do local business, then organization. Then I'm going to show you how to do this in your CMS for your blog post. So right off the bat, you, uh, you'll you select local business, not organization. We'll do local business first, and we'll leave it at local business. Now, there are some more specific ones in here, such as accounting emergency service. Not all sectors are labeled in here, and some of them are actually kind of goofy. So if you don't see what you are, just leave it at local business. In fact, local business works pretty well. There is a, a more specific type that you'll see occasionally, but just leave that. Now what you'll want to do is make sure that you get your start using consistent name, address, phone number. So your Facebook, your Instagram, your YouTube channel, um, your website, everything you do should have the title very accurate so that you show up on branded search. So Asnani CPA tax and accounting is what we go with here. And here's the next thing. So image URL, what we'll want to do is we'll want to put in um, a, an image that will be associated with them. And in WordPress, you'll come into, oh, and I'm kind of doing some stuff here. So we'll go into images and uh, you know, there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could just pull up his website and maybe I'll right click and say, let's view this image in a new window, open new image and tab, and that'll give me the URL for it. So then you'll take that and we'll place that in there. Um, we'll put the ID or the URL for their website. And so I like to copy and paste whenever you're doing this. It makes life a little bit easier. You get some consistency. Um, we'll put that in. Well, ID number URL. Nope, that's good. Um, URL phone number, put their phone number in there. And let's just say, now you can get into price range and you could put like $2 if you wanted in there. You have your street address, your city address, your zip code, your country, your latitude and longitude, which can be a little tricky to find. Um, I'll show you real quick. You go to Google Maps and sometimes they're easy to find, sometimes they're not easy to find. Let's just do like a feedback range. I'll do my business. And once you get it up here, you'll notice that there's, if you go to your, your little icon and you right click and you say, what's here, make sure that you actually have your thing. What's here, here's your latitude and longitude, right? Um, so that's one way to do it. Again, you right click, what's here? and latitude and longitude. So you could take that and put it into your schema markup. It is important to have that in there. And then you'll add your opening hours. And what that'll do is it'll give you this snippet. Now I've already done this, I'm not gonna waste time. But you'll have this, this is the local snippet. Now what I usually do is you'll come into Webflow and there's a couple approaches. I would recommend just putting it in your homepage. So you'll come into the homepage, you'll hit the gear icon, scroll all the way down and in the custom code for this individual page, I would paste it in, hit save, hit publish, and you'll see that it pops up. Now, once you've done that, let's go validate, and we can go to Google and just make sure that the Google Rich Text Validator has seen it, and I've already done that. So you'll see that it says it's eligible for rich results. That's one thing that could happen. Some results show this card here. That's not as big of a deal as um, we just want to show that you're a local business, what your hours are, and it, it's, it is helpful. I've seen this work in the local search. So that's the first one. So paste that in there and that's the first. The, the next one you'll wanna do is your organization. And the organization is just a little bit different because you're gonna be able to associate uh, profiles, like social media profiles that are not necessarily on your website. I do recommend whenever you have a website, down in the footer, I do a number of things. Um, I make sure that I always have buttons for and make sure you have links. Sometimes I'll even do a menu link for the actual um, profile here. So here we've got Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And you'll notice that they all send the same. This is sending a signal that this is a good, viable business and it makes sense. The other thing I'll do is I'll go over to address. And if you look at the address here, I've taken the Google My Business and actually placed it as a link down there in a new tab. And the way that you can do that is if you go to Google, and you go into your Gmail, you head into your Google My Business. Once you're in your Google My Business, there's a new link that makes life a little bit easier. And I'll just go to Feedback Wrench to make life easy. Holy cows, I got a lot of them. Um, and the idea is, is we need to send this signal that this is all interconnected. Because remember, Google's whole thing is that it wants to have expertise, authoritative, and trustworthy um, solutions to queries. So what you'll do here is if you come down into your, your homepage, 
there's a new button that says uh, get more reviews. And if you hit share form review, you'll see that there's this, this uh, link. Now this link has a modifier on it that you might not want to use. The modifier, if you look here, is this forward slash review question mark RC. That's to re request a review. This is a really powerful link. You should save this on your phone so you can test, text this to your, your business um, customers. But if you look at this, this will pop up and have the review form right there to make life really easy to do. Now, you'll, you won't want that to be linked in your footer. What you'll want to do is just take off the, for, the forward slash RC and use this link here because this link is going to point directly to your business. And I've just found that by putting that on your address, you're sending a signal. It really connects them. In fact, when you go to your rich snippet um, profile on Google, so if I were to search feedback wrench, not go to my website, but search it, you'll see in the lower right hand corner here, um, your other profiles often won't get connected unless you do some of this stuff. And sometimes you'll have um, paid search advertising, or not paid search, but your, your, uh, your information here won't work out very well unless you make these connections and Google can, can understand that you are the same organization. If you've had multiple um, and again, you want to make sure you have now in Google My Business, you can't add modifiers onto the name, but you'll want to make sure that that's right. So I put that in the footer. That's one little deal. But let's head back to this organization. Now, organization, I'm going to get the same name. Um, if you have an alternate name, there may be some stuff on there. So it could be that I'm also known as Nuance Financial. <laughs> I'm not going to put that there. Um, you'll put the URL for your actual website there. You'll put your logo URL here. Again, you can go to your, your logo. You can right click, go to open in a new tab and boom, you've got the actual URL. So head over here, put that in there. Now here's what's important. Um, go to this, and I love this tool, Merkel. This is just such a great tool. Um, hit this down button and you'll want to open up any of these profiles that are relevant to you. So if you look in here, we've got the a website. So there could be a separate website you're, you're also connected with. GitHub, Wikipedia, Tumblr, SoundCloud, Pinterest, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, everything. Now what you'll do is you'll come in here. I would put your phone number in there as well. And then I would add in your URLs for Facebook and all of these other organizations. It'll kick out a similar script like this. And I would take this script and I would put it in the same place on your homepage in your code, in your header code, and that will help send some signals. That's an update that we just did to this website. And what you'll see is that that just starts to, to establish your name, address, phone number. Um, and there's other stuff that you could put in there. It could be third-party aggregate reviewers. There's some, some different things there, but this will help to get a knowledge graph eventually. Um, and the small businesses, it's kind of hard to get um, a knowledge graph, but in a knowledge graph, it's this guy over here, not your Google My Business, but an actual knowledge graph. And you can get that. Usually you'll need to open up a Wikipedia and do some different stuff, but it just helps send consistent uh, signals. Now here's the last one. And this is, let's look at what you can do for dynamic content. And we'll have another video about how you can do this with reviews, but right now let's just focus on your blog. Um, if we come back here, we can look at, and let's do article schema. Now there's certain articles that um, I've seen SEO really, you have to be one of the big news cronies. There's certainly bias in news type updates. Um, I don't care what anybody says, it's easy to see. But if you select article, and then you'll see that there's three different types. You've got regular article, news article, or blog posting, or a blog post. I usually use blog post here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a system where you can actually put this into your CMS for your blog so that this gets replicated every single time. And it's very powerful. So, And there's a couple different ways to do that. Um, so blog posting, article URL. So this would be the actual article. I'm just gonna use this as a template. So I wrote article URL. Usually this would be forward slash blog, forward slash coolest blog post ever. You've got the headline that you're gonna want, the URL image. So this would be like the OG image that would get used for social media or whatever your main primary uh, hero image might be. And if you have a second one, you can hit add image and put that there. You'll also have a short description of the article. Um, put the organization Leave it as organization, I think, if you're a business, a person, if you're a person. And then the author, you want to put the author name. So in this case, it would be Asnani CPA. And then you'll put the publisher, which would be your organization again, and then your publisher logo. So go in and find your logo again. You can paste that in there. And once you've done that, you'll have a published date and, a, and an edited date. And what that leads to is this guy here. So what I like to do 
is we can take that script and then let's head over into your CMS and inside your CMS, let's go to your blog post. Essentially what you'll do is you will come down and I like to put in the footers here, um, little additions for each one and I just use text fields, right? So I'm gonna add uh, all the required pieces into that and let's get rid of my OBS here and uh, let's see if I've even got it up here. I think I did. We'll just paste this right here. So um, now I haven't done this through all the way, but you would do like a, a date. So we'll do scheme. We'll just call it schema. So, you know, it's uh, published date. It is ancillary or extra information that you'll have to put out. And then you can do a, an edit date. And that can be nice because as so schema edited date, what that'll do is as an article has changes to it. So publish date, modify date. And then you've got the logo URL. Well, that'll remain the same. Um, headline. So schema headline text. Schema headline. And what you do is you enter all these in here. And then what you can do is a couple of things. You could go into, and there's two approaches for this. You'll have to massage this out to make sure that it works right. But you could come down into now your blog post template and I've seen different things. So now the idea is you'll need to fill this out every time, but come down into the head code and let's put it right there. And what we will do is we'll come in and all you do is replace each one of these. So this would be the article URL. So you'd go schema article URL, right? And you just select what you need in each one of these. And what'll happen is over time, as you post, you'll just make sure you fill those out and it'll post with schema markup. And like I said, it's not the biggest thing in the world. It's not a massive value add, but it's one of those small things of thousands of factors that um, can be important. Now, Moz has an SEO factor thing that they do every year. Um, so every year they go out and they ask what are SEOs seeing as the, the most important factors for SEO? And what you'll see is that there's two types. You have the local finder or local business, anything that has the snack pack or the local finder pack or the three pack of the Google My Business. And over here you have uh, localized organic factors. So again, if I said um, CPA near me, this would be, so you have paid search ads you have your Google My Business. This would be the local snack pack or the local three pack. And then down here, you're into the organics. And these cursed guys, Thumbtack, Home Advisor, they're getting in between you. Angie's List. I mean, don't get in between. Don't let them get in between you. Here, the New York Times is playing dirty, trying to get in between you and your customers. And uh, boy, I tell you what, that's just, you know, Yelp, that's another one. It's just disappointing to see that they get to insert. But if you look here... Um, you know, you have Google My Business Signals, which, so for, for any of these locals, you have proximity to the searcher, you have the categories and the keyword, and then your business title and whatnot. Then you have your link signals, review signals, on-page signals, citation signals, behavior signals, and social signals. So there's this aggregate of things that actually inform what is it that will cause you to pop up in that local three-pack, right? What is it that causes this? Now, we specialize in running ads like this, um, on keywords that matter in order for you to uh, to get easy clicks. <laughs> it, it works like magic. Um, bookkeeper, CPA, accountants near me, um, it works really well. But if you take a look at that Moz, uh, that, that's important. Then over here, you lose the proximity or the Google My Business signals. You just have link signals. But again, if you look at Google's um, EAT factors, they want to serve up search engines that are expertise or they want to search, serve up in their search engine result pages sources that are experts, that are authoritative and trustworthy. So um, having your schema markup and integrating everything can help just a little bit. I hope that's helpful. God bless. Um, man, do I love working in Webflow. And you're on the right track.